the vast majority of time, even nasty viruses have very little chance against a, a well-functioning immune system. Welcome everybody, super excited about this, teaching real estate professionals, notary signage, loan officers, real estate agents, how to stay healthy out there while being face to face with so many um, home uh, owners. And so I'm just thrilled to have Dr. Gundry on. This is such an honor, Dr. Gundry. Thank you so much for being here today. Hey, happy to be here. Thank you so much. And a quick bio on Dr. Gundry, which is just incredible. Dr. Gundry is a renowned cardiologist, surgeon, medical device inventor, four-time New York Times best-selling author. He's appeared in the Wall Street Journal, the Today, Dr. Oz, MFNBC, just to name a few. He has literally performed thousands of heart surgeries in his 40-year career. He is the director and founder of the International Heart and Lung Institute, as well as the Center for Restorative Medicine in Palm Springs in Santa Barbara. And his current best-selling book, Longevity Paradox, is all about how we can live long, healthy lives and fight the disease of aging. I don't think there is a better person to be helping real estate professionals, notary signing agents stay healthy during this during this unprecedented time. So again, Dr. Gundry, thank you so much for being here. Oh, well, thanks again, Doug. Let's go. Let's go, that's right. So just to give you a little quick background, Dr. Gundry, you know, we, my audience is real estate professionals, real estate professionals who are out there in the field. And the, at the time of this recording, uh, there's a coronavirus going on, but I would actually like to take it a little bit higher than the coronavirus, uh, Dr. Gundry. I wanna talk about the flu season and people have colds. I wanna help real estate agents uh, kind of protect themselves regardless what time of year it is. I know my personal feeling is this kind of the new normal. So let's just have a conversation on, on your take on, you know, a real estate professional who's three feet away from a homeowner for about an hour and, and helping the homeowner feel more confident that, you know, nothing's being transmitted and ultimately the notary signing agent protecting themselves. So uh, this is kind of a conversation on what you think the best practices are out there to keep everybody safe. Well, so all viral transmissions are, are either airborne or from usually solid surfaces like, like counters, like plastics. It's actually very difficult to transmit from porous paper. And quite frankly, you're not going to wipe down all the documents that anybody's going to sign. Now, should you wipe down or disinfect a pen that's being used for signing? Yeah, because that's a surface that these things can attach to. Believe it or not, it looks like the coronavirus is as easy to catch as a cold. And that's its problem. Many of us can have the coronavirus and not know we have it because it doesn't make most people sick like they have the flu. But at the same time, we have to realize that even worst case scenario with every group out there in the world that's been studied, the chance of this virus killing you is still extremely low. Maybe 1%, maximum in Italy it's 4%. So the vast majority of people, if they catch this virus, are not, are not gonna die. The, the important thing to realize about a virus is a virus does not want you to die. In fact, that's the last thing a virus wants you to do because you're only useful to the virus to have a place for the virus to duplicate itself. But more importantly, the virus actually wants you, in the case of the coronavirus, to cough. Because from what we can tell now, the coronavirus is most easily spread by coughing and when it's aerosolized. Let's pause there. So if coughing is the best way to, to transfer from a person to person, a mask does or does not prevent the cough to go through that. So the, the mask will prevent the droplets that have concentrated virus on them. That's true. But the mask does not prevent individual virus particles 
from going through the mask. Not even a surgical mask will do that. So if coughing is the most important thing, what the real estate professional needs to know is one of the most important recommendations that came out of any of the guidance is, number one, do not cover your face to cough because now you're seating your hand. It's far more important to cough into your elbow because you're not commonly going to then take your elbow and do so. Okay, this is a great conversation. So I'm starting to put some pieces together. So if the best way to transfer any type of virus, whether it's flu, coronavirus, whatnot, is from touch. And if you're saying that it could live on the counters, it can live on a, a pen. So what I'm picking up is the best way that, that uh, real estate professionals can protect themselves is using gloves, right? Maybe a disposable glove. So walking into an appointment and maybe giving the borrower or buyer a set of gloves and you wearing a set of gloves on top of sanitizing is probably one of the best protections of a real estate professional. Am I picking up on that? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great idea. Plus, you actually have a better opportunity to sanitize a pair of gloves than actually your hand. And quite frankly, surgeons, depending on our protocol, wash our hands three to eight minutes at a time <laughs> Before, before we then put gloves on in surgery. Now, having said that, hand washing is very effective against this virus. Do that and then use a pair of gloves to protect yourself and offer a pair of gloves to your clients. This is such great information. So, you know, just to kind of end the mask conversation. So if, if two borrowers or, you know, real estate agent, notary signing agent was across from a, a homeowner, and they both have masks on, and they both cough. The big droplets will be covered by the mask, but there's still a chance that the virus mist gets through. Exactly. Interesting, okay. So I've had a few questions from, stu from students in my audience about what, what's the N95? Is that something that they should spend a lot of money on? Does that still catch the droplets? Let's talk about the N95 mask. Yeah, so the N95 is a virus filtering mask, and it will filter virus particles. But right now, uh, we need those masks where someone has a confirmed infection in a hospital or is suspected of having a infection. And really, the average consumer should not be taking those masks out of circulation where they're needed for people, you know, in our intensive care and other intensive cares who are actively caring for coronavirus patients. In conclusion to wrapping this up, what sounds like the best case scenario for a real estate professional, a notary signing agent dealing with another borrower with papers on the uh, counter is to wash your hands, sanitize your hands, then put on some gloves, walk into the house, give them a set of gloves, do the appointment, sign your documents, and then walk out of the appointment, take off your gloves, re-sanitize your hands, and call it a day. That's correct. Then lastly, regardless of flu season or the current pandemic, it isn't a good idea to walk into a homeowner's house uh, touch paperwork and touch any of your face, regardless if it's the flu or if it's the coronavirus. That's correct. Yeah, okay, this, all of these viruses depend on you getting that virus to one of your mucous membranes, whether right. it's rubbing your eye, whether it's scratching your nose, whether it's licking your finger to turn a page. Uh, uh, that's what it wants you to do. Perfect. So last thing, and I think you mentioned it briefly, and since a lot of my notary signing agents deal with a lot of pieces of paper, the, you made a statement that, you know, the virus has a difficult lot time living on paper because it's porous. After they take their gloves off and then they need to return the stack of papers to the next person, they shouldn't overly concern themselves that the virus is living on that paperwork. That's correct. Plus, I mean, realistically, there is really no good way to you know, sanitize paper because whatever agent you're going to do use is going to wet in one way or another. One of the things we have to keep in mind 
is that an immune system is properly bolstered and is properly functioned, then the vast majority of time, even nasty viruses have very little chance against a, a well-functioning immune system. I think that's the important thing for people to take away. Who are we telling is, is the most susceptible to this virus and who's most susceptible to dying from this virus? And it's people with a compromised immune system, and I'm a transplant surgeon, uh, people who have a chronic medical condition. And okay, so that's high blood pressure, that's heart disease, that's diabetes, that's cancer patients. What that is actually saying, and what I teach in all my books, is that you have a chronic medical condition because you have a leaky gut and gut dysbiosis. And that was actually the cause of your chronic medical condition. It's not that you have a chronic condition that makes you more susceptible to this virus. The fact that you have a chronic condition is trying to tell you that you have a leaky gut and intestinal dysbiosis. And if you fix that, you will have a wonderful immune system that will do its darndest to protect you. You said something that I don't think a lot of people understood because I didn't, and that is, Viruses will attack somebody when the immune system's low. So even if you're in contact with someone who has a coronavirus and you are healthy and your immune system's pumping on all eight cylinders, your odds of getting it are low because your immune system's doing what it's supposed to be doing and it's fighting viruses every single day. So if you walk into an appointment with someone who, let's just say, has the flu and then you don't get the flu because your immune system's high. And that's always so intriguing because I've always wondered how come my wife could have the flu and then I don't get the flu. And after I read your books, I realized it's because my immune system wasn't compromised. So I was living a healthy life, eating the healthy food. So the flu didn't transfer from her to me because I was healthy. Like that was so mind blowing for me. So uh, with that being said, and I hope people understood what we kind of summarized there. With that being said, Dr. Gundry, what foods should people be eating to help their immune system? So even if they run into somebody with the flu, the chances of getting the flu are less because their immune system's already running at a high level. We have a hundred trillion bacteria that live in our gut, and it's collectively known as the microbiome. And that microbiome actually educates our immune system, and it teaches our immune system. So the foods that feed a healthy mi microbiome are actually well known. And it's foods that most of us unfortunately don't eat most of the time. For instance, mushrooms are one of the best foods that anybody can eat round the clock as often as possible because mushrooms actually, number one, feed friendly bacteria. They love it. But they also have compounds that have been shown in studies to strengthen the immune system. The other thing you can do is use what are called resistant starches. Let me give you some examples. Cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, bok choy, are great for this purpose. The inulin-containing vegetables, now that's a fancy word, but it's a sugar that we can't digest, but our gut buddies love. Things like radicchio, Belgian endive, chicory, sunchokes, cabbages, sweet potatoes, rutabagas, turnips, those old traditional vegetables. The more of these things we add into our diet now and in the future, the better you're going to have a microbiome that teaches your immune system to be healthy. Once again, you have an amazing book, Plant Paradox, that kind of goes into this microbiome concept deeper. Let's just summarize really quickly the importance of gut health and how that directly uh, leads to a good immune system. Yeah, so let's take that uh, one step further. We know that about 70% of all of our white blood cells, our immune system, line the gut or down in our belly. And 70% of them are there for actually a very good reason, because 
the lining of our gut is the same surface area as a tennis court. And that tennis court uh, is only one cell thick. So here's the problem. If we constantly have foreign proteins, bacteria coming through the wall of our gut, our immune system diverts all of its energy down into the gut to fight this battle. And when that happens, your immune system, which should also be up in your mouth, up in your nose, up in your lungs, isn't there because it's been distracted by what's going on in people's guts. And what's fascinating to me and my patient populations is that we can take a person who is constantly getting colds. Whatever virus was going around, they were picking it up. Their kids were giving them five you know, bugs every year. And when we change their diet, all of a sudden, they don't get those colds. And I was one of those as well. I was always sick. And I figured, oh, you know, that's because I work in a hospital. Since I changed my diet, I never get sick. Because, and I still work in a hospital. I still see sick patients every day. And that's because my immune system is no longer distracted during, work, during doing work down in my gut. Now it's able to defend me from the word go. And there's an expression in the military that a recipe for disaster is to fight a two-front war. And if you're fighting a war down in your gut, you don't have the ability to fight a war up in your mouth and your nose and your lungs. Quite frankly, I think that's what's happening in this current crisis. Yeah, I think what's I thought what the most eye-opening thing for me is, you know, and a lot of real estate agent professionals, notary signing agents out there on the front lines is if your immunity is already high, the, the odds of catching any virus decreases exponentially. So you have a lot of healthy people who are going into the homes kind of unnecessarily freaking out. And it's and I think the best analogy is have you ever noticed if you don't get sick even though your spouse is sick? So by increasing your immune system. We really don't have as much to freak out about because our body is doing what it's supposed to do. I'll end with this is, you know, I think people need to be, understand what you said is 70% of our white blood cells, which are kind of our immune fighters live in our gut. And so 70% of our white blood cells live in our gut. We got to strengthen that gut because that's where the majority of our immune system lives. And I thought that was really eye-opening with the research that you're giving. So there's this guide writing the supplements, you know, another one of your expertise. You have, you have a phenomenal line that we use. So what's the importance of supplements? Uh, what's the science behind supplements and why should people take supplements if they can't eat what you just suggested? There's several supplements uh, that are probably critical to take year round, and that's vitamin D3. And the average person needs to take 5,000 international units a day. I've been telling all of my patients, and I personally kick mine up to 10,000 a day during this time period. Everybody hears about vitamin C. The vitamin, problem with vi vitamin C is it's water soluble and we lose it from our body about every two to three hours. So a solution for that is to take either timed release vitamin C or to take vitamin C capsules or tablets uh, four times a day. Uh, when you wake up around noon, around dinner time, before you go to bed. That'll get you a sustained level of vitamin C. So those are the two big ones. If you can find zinc lozenges to suck on, they're also very useful. And also elderberry has been shown to be antiviral as well. There are actually good studies documenting the antiviral effects of these. Now what is also well documented is that olive oil is actually, and the compounds in olive oil, are actually antiviral, and there is at least one published study showing that the components in olive oil are anti-coronavirus, including the SARS virus for what it was protected. Now, you can't necessarily carry around olive oil, although we have the highest polyphenol olive oil that's been measured uh, that is in a small bottle, but olive leaf extract take a couple of those every day, you'll get all the polyphenols that have been shown to improve the immune system 
and all you got to do is take them with you and swallow them. But getting back to the gut, most of my products are designed to improve gut health, improve the wall of the gut. One of my newest products is BioComplete 3, which has both a probiotic, which is friendly bacteria, prebiotics, which is actually the things that friendly bacteria need to eat, and a new concept, which is called postbiotics. Postbiotics are the material that actually communicate to the immune system. And this is a, actually a revolutionary product, and we sell out of it every time we make a batch, but it's called BioComplete 3. One of the easy things for people on the go to do is to get my pre-bio-thrive. And it does what exactly it sounds like. It's, a, it's multiple prebiotics. Prebiotics are the food that good gut bacteria need. And it's in all those product, all those vegetables that I was talking about. And you're right. It's not practical to, particularly when you're out on the road, uh, you know, can I have an order of cabbage, please? Uh, <laughs> so all you do is take a scoop of this and mix it in water every day. And you, it's the equivalent of eating like nine cups of vegetables every day in terms of what you're going to feed your bacteria. Now, finally, I mentioned mushrooms. And again, it's pretty hard to get mushrooms out on the road. It's not exactly a, a fast food staple. And you're probably not going to you know, show up for your appointment munching on a button mushroom. So I make a product that's a tincture of three very potent mushrooms called M Vitality. And it comes in a liquid with a dropper. And you can put it in your mouth, put it under your tongue. I squirt it in my coffee every morning. And I get all the benefit of eating lots and lots of mushrooms, but it's in a tincture and you know, I can take it wherever I want. So those are just a few of the options. Love it, love it. So just in conclusion, I heard uh, vitamin D3, I heard zinc, I heard elderberry, and I heard anything that really supports gut uh, function and immunity, whether it be prebiotics, any type of those biotics that help the gut health. And so I just think you gave some amazing knowledge right there. And I'll just kind of end with this last question. If you have a few minutes, I do have some questions from some of the audience right now. Um, you know, there's some people out there who are just kind of non-believers in supplements, what, what, just the industry of supplements, you know, not specific to yours or anybody's. So what's the science behind supplements? Because, you know, I want all my, my audience to be as healthy as possible. And so what's the science behind supplements in general? So I used to think supplements made expensive urine. I told all my patients that they do. And I can tell you that, in fact, supplements do not make expensive urine. I do very comprehensive blood work on thousands of patients every three months. And I can tell when they're taking a supplement that I asked them to take, and not even my brand, and when they stopped it because of what we change on the blood work. I presented multiple papers at the American Heart Association looking at the effect of supplements like my, my own products, like Vital Reds, for instance, in looking at flexibility of blood vessels. Uh, I recently presented a paper looking at a 12-year follow-up of people with known coronary artery disease who changed their diet and started taking supplements, many of which they could find at Costco or Trader Joe's. And the incidence of a new event of coronary artery disease 12 years later was only 1% of people had a new stent or a new bypass. And if we look at traditional medical practices, if you had a stent, 50% of you will have another stent in five years if following optimal medical practice and so supplements do not make expensive urine and all of my products are actually backed by human clinical trials and anyone who looks at any of my infomercials will see that we actually show the clinical trial that backs up our claim and the nice thing is all of my supplements i design myself based on my tens of thousands of patients through the years who have taken supplements and 
we've figured out the results. No, and I, I personally take them, my family takes them. So I will 100% vouch for your products and I'm so thankful for here that you're here today. And, you know, kind of wrapping up, you know, and if you have a couple minutes for a couple of questions, we'd super appreciate it. Um, just kind of wrapping up the, the conversation is, you know, what I thought was most eye opening about our conversation today is the biggest thing to me is if your immunity is as high as it can be, viruses in general won't attack. You. So a lot of us are going healthy into these appointments. We really don't have much to worry about because our immunity is at an utmost level. So again, that's why your spouse can be sick and you never get sick. If your spouse is sick and you get sick, that's a clue to you that your immune system was down. That to me is a game changer. And the fact that supplements and eating better can raise your immunity up. So even with the coronavirus or the flu or the common cold, we can protect ourselves by just staying healthy. That to me was unbelievable information. So thank you again. Here are a couple questions that I have. The first one is, how can a person who has asthma, diabetes, and overweight improve their immune system? That's an easy one. If you follow the plant paradox rules, and you follow the rules of taking those supplements, in general, in my practice, their diabetes will be gone, their asthma will be gone, and I track that. So that these are changeable problems. The fact that a person has asthma or diabetes actually tells me that they have leaky gut. And these are fixable problems. Got it. No, it's great. And everybody, there's a link down below for Dr. Gundry's products. Uh, for the Plant Paradox book he's speaking about, any of his amazing products are linked below. Um, there's another question. So in our industry, when you're a notary signing agent, you have to use a thumbprint. So you need to get a thumbprint from the homeowner. Can we talk about, you know, how would you sanitize a thumbprint pad uh, so you could, would that work? Talk on about that. That was a good question that just came in. That is a great question. And I quite frankly don't know the answer, but the important thing is you're, they're going to remove the glove if they have the gloves on to do that, have another glove available for them. But these viruses cannot live for extended periods of time on surfaces. Is an alcohol wipe effective to get rid of some of the bacteria and virus? Well, alcohol is very you know, antiviral. Uh, alcohol will sterilize against viruses. So uh, alcohol, and even, you know, even a, a spray uh, alcohol is, is better than nothing. Um, with so many supplements out there, how would you know if you're getting ones, too many supplements, not supplements, um, cheap supplements versus, you know, the top of the line like yours? You just, that's the last question of the day. One of the reasons I came out with my own line of sub supplements is so many people wanted me to put my name on their supplements. But when I looked at where they came from, how they were made, the shortcuts that were done, uh, I finally said, now if I'm going to have a line of supplements, I'm gonna control every part of the process. I know what needs to go in, the amount that needs to go in. I know when you, know, you don't need more than something. So that's one of the reasons we've become one of the most trusted brands is because everything that I make and sell flows through me and based on my research. And we don't, we don't do anything that hasn't been backed up by human uh, clinical trials. Well, Dr. Gundry, thank you so much. I hope everyone got amazing value from Dr. Gundry. Again, there's a link below. Click the link below to get a link to all the Dr. Gundry's products and books. He's a four-time New York bestseller. So thank you again, Dr. Gundry. Have a phenomenal rest of your weekend, and I will talk to you later. Bye. All right. Take care. Thank you. Okay. So Dr. Gundry has left us. Um, look, there was a lot of information in there that I just thought was mind blowing. The most important thing that I hope you took from that, <clears throat> which I did, is the fact that if your immunity is high, even if someone who is sick coughs in your face, the idea that you get it is lessened. I thought that was like, wow, mind blowing information, right? I feel so much better that you're out on the front lines, period. There's no one better to talk about this than Dr. Gundry right now. I mean, he's kind of the forthright uh, expert on, on gut health, 
you know I only bring on the very best people for you. I am a proud affiliate of Dr. Gundry's products. Go to loansigningsystem.com slash healthy notary. Get his book. Click the link below. Um, I'll talk to you guys in the six-figure group. I'm out of here. Bye.